Hello, everybody. Our Torah portions at this time of year tell us of the great accomplishments of our forefathers and foremothers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, the great sacrifices they made and the things that they did. Abraham, he goes out at the command of God to the land of Israel. He deals with many, many difficulties. The Akedah, the binding of Isaac, Isaac himself, Jacob and his, uh, his great accomplishments, the founder really of the Jewish people, ultimately. These are stories of the greats, the hall of fame, if you will. Surprisingly, the Tana Devei Eliyahu, which is a collection of Midrashim, the Tana Devei Eliyahu tells us that Chay of Lomar, a person must say, every Jew must say as follows, Masai Yagiyu Masai, when will my actions arrive, the Masai Avosai, Avraham Yitzhak Yaakov? When will my actions reach the level of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of the forefathers, the foremothers, when will my actions achieve the same level of greatness, the same greatness? Wow. I'm not sure how to understand that. I mean, I try. I, I strive to do well. But to reach the levels of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to reach their elevated levels, uh, I don't expect any time soon that God will be speaking to me and giving me direction in life, at least not directly. So, I'd like to share with you an approach from the Nesiva Shalom, my favorite work of Hasidic writing. Nesiva Shalom says that obviously we're not going to become Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're not going to become Sarah and Rebecca tomorrow. That's not why a whole lifetime could be invested, and we probably will not even probably, we won't reach their level. However, the question is. Masayagiu, the question is, when will my actions reach their level? Is indicative of a striving. We're striving in many, many ways. We're striving as did the forefathers. We are striving to accomplish. We might not accomplish their levels. We may never achieve. We won't achieve their levels. Okay. But the striving, what's known in Hebrew as she'ifa, the striving has to be there. What are we striving for? So one thing that we're striving for is what's known as hasagos gedolos, great insight. We strive as they did to have great insight. We want to achieve the levels that they achieved. If they became closer to God, we want to become closer to God because the closer to God we are, the closer we are, the more spiritual we become the more aware we become of the blessings in our lives. There's so many blessings. We also, besides those abstract ideas, we also need to realize how good we are. We have to become increasingly aware. We have to strive to recognize our goodness. Now, this is very, very important. We have a tendency, oh, when will Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, I'll never be like them, I'll never be like them, and I'll never be like them. I'm no good. I'm no good. I haven't achieved Abraham, Isaac. No, stop that talk. That's nonsense. We have to recognize how good we are. We do so many great things. Could we be better? Yes. But we're striving. We're striving, and we recognize how good we are, and we are striving based on that to become even better. Final idea, perhaps, about what it is that we're striving for is to improve ourselves when it comes to those things which are permitted to us. There's a famous story. I'm sure you know it. Maybe you know it, right? A potential proselyte, a potential convert comes to Hillel, and he says to Hillel, teach me the whole Torah when I stand on one leg. To which Hillel replies, Ma the sunny lach, that which is distasteful to you, you shouldn't do to your friend. Treat other people as you would treat yourself would seem to be the message. However, there's a famous Hasidic interpretation, that which 
is hateful to you, to your connection to God, lo sabed, you shouldn't do. It's like a little shift on it, right? Instead of what is hateful to you, you shouldn't do to your friend, it's what is hateful to you or what is negative for your relationship, lechavercha, from chibur, to connect. Same idea, right? We're connected to our friends. That which is bad for our connection to God, we shouldn't do. That's what we should be striving for. Mitzvos, we do what we should. We don't do what we shouldn't do. We know how good we are. At the same time, there are many things that are per permitted to us where we could easily fall astray and fall into materialism and, and, and the pursuit of our pleasures at the expense of our spirituality and our connection to God. That's where we want to improve. Therefore, we should constantly be asking that just like the forefathers were able, even in the simple things in life that were permitted to them, they're permitted to everybody, even in business, even in their interpersonal relationships, even in what they consumed and how much pleasure they pursued, all of those things, the restraint that they showed, we want that also. We are striving to achieve the restraint, even within those things that are permitted to us, that might undermine our relationship with God. I'd like to apply these ideas in three ways. First of all, our nation. Our nation needs to get back to striving for better. Our nation needs to be focused on what can we do to positively move forward towards those things that America should represent and those things which America should offer. At the same time, at the same time, we need to realize that for all of the warts and all of the problems and all of the disagreements and the tension that we are suffering now, we are so good. Let us not forget how good we are, that we are still a free nation, that we are still a nation that gives people opportunity, tremendous opportunity, that we are still a nation which is, by and large, the envy of the world. We're so good, but we have to get back to striving for better for higher, for a deeper national spiritual reality. And along those lines, that which is damaging to your relationship, to your ideals, we have to avoid. Our country has become overly materialistic. About this, there can be no question. The minimum standard that people have for what is acceptable as a comfort and living, etc., has just become so exaggerated. And we've become a very materialistic society. We need to strive for better. That materialism is taking us away from our values. We need to rediscover the rewards of sacrifice, the rewards of looking for what will be not just for us, but will be for the generations that follow us. We need to strive to higher things. And in order to get there, we need to be less materialistic. Because the materialism of America is one of the things that is truly undermining its relationship with striving for its goals. As a synagogue, as a synagogue, we need to continue to strive to build a future. And while that future right now is less defined than it has been in a number of years, there is still tremendous opportunity to strive to do more, to be more and to grow. The opportunities are still there. At the same time, we need to recognize how good we are. Here we are after 50 years. Here we are providing services that no one else provides to a segment of the population that wants true Torah values and wants a traditional service, we're providing that. We provide something that no one else in the community really can provide, that middle ground between the extremes of orthodoxy and the sometimes irrelevance and certainly spiritual, uh, spiritual mediocrity that we see in other places. 
We are a great congregation and we will continue to be great and we have opportunities if we continue to strive, we have opportunities to build on the greatness of the past. And then finally, as individuals, we all need to recognize the power of striving, that if we simply strive to do more, that will pull us to be better. We won't get there quickly and we might never get to be Masse Avos. We might never get to be, you know, obviously as great as the forefathers, but we can strive. We can have as much motivation and determination. We can harvest our resources and use our skills and our talents to build our relationship with God. We can strive as individuals. The best ways to do that, obviously learning more. Opportunities to learn Torah through the congregation and otherwise. Taking on, take on one more small thing. The striving itself, the wanting to do more will motivate you. You'll know right away that one thing you should take on. Small, small steps. Because striving is great, but it's always accomplished with small steps. And finally, we all need to recognize and embrace our basic goodness. For all of our shortcomings and failings, we are good, decent people who care about other people, who care about our congregation, who care about our community and the future of our nation and the future of the Jewish people. We are so good. Remember that and use that as motivation so that as we strive to be better, we know that we are building off of strength. We are building off of things we've already accomplished. We have the capacity to grow and to continue. We need just to strive. When will my actions achieve and reach the level of the actions of those who came before me, of those Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who strived with everything they had to fulfill the will of God, the forefathers and the foremothers? That's what we want to do. We want to strive to be better. And in that striving, we will discover and rediscover how good we are and we will discover what we are truly capable of and we will in fact be able to build a better world for our nation, for our congregation and for ourselves. Shabbat Shalom.